Monday night chat with Wong Chen. Brought to you by the member of parliament for Subang. Hi, welcome to Monday night chat episode 46. We're still in parliament this week, so it's going to be about parliament. Uh, this week in parliament, followed by QA. And for the third item, I'll just leave it to the editors of this video to do whatever they want. Hi, for this week in Parliament, uh, you know, as you know, last week I was in New York for the, uh, the United Nations UK Missions uh, SDG 16 issue. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that, but for this week in Parliament, this is what's happening. So first, the United Nations, uh, you know, UK mission uh, trip. I, it took me a whole day to get there. <laughs> it took me then a day for, for me to have, you know, to, to recover from jet lag. And then, you know, 15 minutes of a speech by me. I answered three questions and then, you know, that, that was basically my participation in the whole thing. And I had a free day where I did a bit of uh, jalan jalan makan. And then I jumped into a plane and it took me a whole day back. So I was back on Sunday. So Monday morning, first day of parliament uh, for the third week. First thing was the PAC meeting. We had a new uh, PAC reports coming in and also the PAC GST issue. Uh, that was table. I'll try to answer that in the uh, Q&A session later. But basically we tabled the new report. So the Auditor General came to brief us of all the scandals that they've recently uncovered. But overall, it's not too bad. So there seems to be some improvement regarding uh, scandal issues. Uh, the best performing uh, ministry, I think, was domestic trade and the worst performing was the Ministry of Finance. But even the worst was given a good rating, which is 4 out of 5 star, right? Then uh, we, I had a meeting with the Speaker, of course, because I represented the Parliament Malaysia for the New York trip. So I had a short meeting, 20 minutes, just to brief to him what happened, uh, you know, and explain to him all those things. And then I had a meeting at Cup 1 as well to thank her for her, in, you know, intervention in getting me a visa. So then I went off to do the High Com, uh, Singapore High Commission Civil Service uh, Director level chat where I had a one hour dialogue with them and about 20-30 minutes of speech uh, on Tuesday. Tuesday we had more meetings, okay, early morning meeting. I had a meeting strangely enough organized by my wife, uh, by my wife with the Singapore Think Tank and then I had uh, go to parliament and I had a few more meetings uh, followed by a briefing by the Ministry of Women uh, uh, where Cup 1 gave a speech and then Hannah also uh, made some uh, discussion point on the new sexual harassment bill that we want to introduce. I was asked to give my opinion, so I gave my opinion in that one. And then of course in the evening of Tuesday was the big 18-year-old uh, voting bill and that passed uh, with no opposition. So the speeches were all pro it. Uh, there are reasons why they do this because I think most of the opposition are going to make some gains politically from this. Therefore, it's quite clear that they were supportive of this 18, uh, 18 year old voter thing. On Wednesday, there was an ICU meeting with the Deputy Prime Minister again, Cup 1. She gave a briefing on the ICU uh, numbers, which is basically in charge of the community funding that we get. We get 2 million from the Prime Minister Department and 1.5 million also from the Prime Minister Department, but separate allocation for community. Uh, then, of course, Wednesday night was a big vote on the Sabah issue. Most of us from the peninsula did not take part because, you know, Sabah should be given the option to the Sabah uh, members of parliament to speak. Again, it was very clear that AMNO and also PASS uh, was going to support this. So, again, you know, you have to read between the lines what all this really means, okay? On Thursday, the big story is, of course, IPCMC bill finally tabled after more than 10 years up, some people 16 years, right? So it was tabled but not discussed. It's only a first reading, that means in October we should have the second reading uh, when Parliament recedes again. And then uh, nothing much today, a lot a lot of political activity of course uh, from this Azmin sex video, he said this, he said that, whatever. Lah. So those kind of things were happening a lot in Parliament. Uh, but they're not official work. Official work, I have a 3pm 3, 3 uh, PAC meeting again, as you know. As a member of PAC, is extremely busy. A lot of our time is taken up on the PAC issue. Now, lastly, tomorrow Friday, we're shooting this on Thursday. Tomorrow Friday, I'm back to Parliament again because we're going to have the National Forum on Sustainability and SDG. As you know, I am now more or less a bit of an expert on SDG 16, which is good governance and reform in Parliament. 
And but I, I also take on SDG 13, which is climate change for the IPA ASEAN context. So tomorrow I'm coming back to Parliament for a uh, two or three hours event. Then that's it for Parliament this week and the end of Parliament for this session. For Q&A this week, we have uh, as usual five questions. So Adrian, can you press the button? Thank you. Okay, first question. What are my views on the vote on the Sama regulation? Uh, as I said in the earlier thing, the what was really surprising for me is that well, Amlo gave a speech that they were against it. When it came to the vote, they were in full support of it. So I don't know what this means. It, I, I would read this as a political thing where they are gaining or they're trying to present themselves uh, as being very supportive of whatever Dr. Mahathir wants to propose. Number two, Undi 18. Well, it's been passed. Uh, of course, now the big work is for us to get to make sure that the young generation are taught about constitutional law, make them more politically aware, so that by the time, you know, at, at least start the, the education system on the, at the age of 14, 15, 16, so by the time they're 18, they actually know what they're doing when they go to the vote. Number three, the land reclamation that's affecting the Nelayan issue. This has made international news, even though strictly speaking it is a, a state matter. Uh, I don't really have much to say about this except that I bumped into Anwar today and he told me that he's rushing to Penang uh, and that he's got a, the, the permission from the Prime Minister to look into this matter and try to talk to uh, the, the Chief Minister of Penang and try to resolve the matter. Because I think a lot of uh, fishermen, both Chinese and Malays, are affected by it. Number four, the Teo Beng Hock story. This is, of course, very upsetting for many of us. Um, you know, we are in full solidarity with DAP on this issue. Uh, we just hope that Tommy Thomas will relook his decision. I think there is a prima facie case for some homicide investigation and prosecution. Number five, uh, Wang Ji, the preacher who was beaten up in prison. Now, that is an eye opener. I mean, we know this all along, but for the first time, we're giving full coverage on this issue. I think it is extremely important to show you know whatever goodwill we still have with the public that we are for reform and this is like the easiest reform we're not talking about difficult political reform easiest reform just get the prison system better better treatment of prison if we don't do that i don't know what we can do that's it for q and a this week hey guys we're here for the most famous thing in ss15 Traffic? No. We are here for all bubble tea!